Okay, so welcome back to the cabin. Um, it is December 24th, 2022, Christmas Eve. Um, my daughter has to work until 10 o'clock this evening, I believe. Um, so I wanted to take the time to share a little project that I've got going on here. Um, so how I work for myself. So I'm divorced. I lived alone until my daughter moved home last year. I built this cabin all by myself and I kind of developed this uh, rewards program for myself. And I know that might sound a little crazy, but it really helped me push myself beyond my limit because the harder I pushed myself, the bigger the reward. So at the end of the week, we have the, the Rogers flea market here near me. Um, in the summertime, if I worked really hard and I pushed hard all week on Friday, I would give myself two or three hours to go to the sale and a little bit of spending money. So that's my reward because I worked so hard for myself, I rewarded myself. Well, it's here it is, it's the middle of the winter time. It is negative three outside right now. Um, you have to stop for a minute. She's got a bone under the table. So if you hear a bone, that's all it is here. I'm not gonna take it from her, but yet we had, <coughs> I also, just two days ago, celebrated my 2 million views on YouTube. Um, that's not a big deal for most people. Some people have 20 million views on one video, but for me, it was a big deal. So I invited a couple friends over. I bought some Tomahawk steaks. I'll throw some pictures in here so you can see it. And we, I didn't do a, a video. We cooked them in the fireplace. We um, just sat and enjoyed each other and, and you know, just it was just it was fun to do that with my friends and to celebrate this accomplishment that I didn't even know I was going to do. So but anyway, if you hear her chewing under the table, that's what it is. She got the leftover bones. So um, back to my my little uh, rewards program that I set up for myself. So the harder I work, the more the reward. Um, you know, I do make a living but i don't spend a lot of money so typically i have the money to give myself these little rewards so what you see in front of me this is one of my rewards so it's the middle of the winter roger's sale is not i mean it's open it's always open but there's not very many people there but that same company has auctions and i went to one of the auctions and i purchased these two angle lamps now they're wall mounted angle lamps and i'm going to light them for you but actually, when I was bidding on them, I didn't even want the entire lamp. I just wanted the globes because this is an angle lamp chandelier. And it takes two of these. This globe and this globe would go on that to complete that as a working chandelier. So that's what I wanted. I wanted the globes. But after purchasing them, I'm like, there is no way that I could tear these apart. So I built these little brackets to put it on. Um, and then I have, there's these two, but then I also have another I wanna show you. Um, I can't even determine what's my favorite. I don't have anything like these two, except for this one that needed globes. And then the other one, I don't have anything like it either. So I'll bring it over and light it as soon as I'm done with this one. But anyway, I wanna light these for you um, and show them to you. And lanterns are really, Oh, I'm really fond of oil lamps and and it goes so much deeper than just the lamp. I mean, my entire tattoo is oil lamps and it's actually a song. And, and at the end of the video, I will I will tell you what song it is, too. So my entire tattoo is our lamps lit projecting light. So I'll, I'll get the song for you as soon as we light a couple of these. And then you close this back up and then when you put the chimney on it draws the air past the flame pulling the flame out into the globe and of course the hotter it gets the the more the air flows past the the fire and 
and it really those I did replace the wicks on them because the other ones were old. That's probably at my max for now. Once it heats up a little bit, I can actually give it a little bit more and it'll still burn up and not fume up on me. So let me get this one lit real quick. I mean, that, that is super bright. I mean, I could imagine that I could easily navigate through the kitchen. Now, I do have another oil lamp lit here and one lit up here as well. And I do have some, some electric lights on. I'm not trying to deceive you in any way, shape, or form. And it's not quite dark. So I have a window here that's, it's starting to get dark but the window is still letting in some light. So all of the light in the room is not coming from these, but they sure are putting off enough light. I definitely could see using these. I wanna have little get togethers um, where we do shut the power off. And, and the thing is, I'm not what you wanna call a over the top extreme prepper but I have the knowledge that it takes to survive. So this is one of the survival things that, you know, if you want to see after dark, um, you kind of need light. Now, I think what we need to understand too is that back in the days of, of oil lamps, oil might've been a lot cheaper, but it was still very expensive. So we might pay an electric bill today, they bought oil. People did not stay up you know, we're on up until midnight watching TV. I don't. I typically, 9, 10 o'clock, I'm in bed. People, but the average person stays up really late. Sometimes they stay up till 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Back in those days, the days of this cabin, when it got dark, people went to bed. Winter was the time to let your body recover so that when spring came, and you had to do all your planting and your body would be recovered. So people didn't burn these for a super, super long time. They burnt them when they were having their meals. If they were out in the field until after dark, they burnt them for a little while and then they went to bed and they slept until it got daylight again. And then they did their day in the daylight. So people weren't running these things and keeping their houses lit like we light a house today. Okay. So I'm gonna put these out, let them cool. I am gonna put them on the chandelier for you so you can see that chandelier um, with these globes on. So I'm gonna shut these off and let them cool and I'll switch those globes over. I'll switch the globes over to those and then I want to light the other one for you. So let me get these out of the way. Okay, this is an Aladdin globe lantern. I want to point out real quick too, you'll notice that the fireplace is not burning. In almost all of my videos, that fireplace is burning. With it being negative three out right now, the fireplace actually heats better if you don't use it than it does if you do. And let me explain. If you fire that thing up right now, all of the smoke that's going out of the chimney has to be replaced with outside air. So what happens is that every drop of air that it sucks into your house will be negative three degrees. Now you can put an outside air kit into it. However, it doesn't, it doesn't help all the way. That's the same as if you wash clothes on a day like today and you run your dryer, you will instantly notice that uh, it's getting drafty in here, which because the dryer is blowing air outside and then instantly everything else in the house has to suck in this cold air. So on a day like today, negative three, 
you are better off to not burn the fireplace. And I will actually shoot a video showing that because if I put thermometers in the back rooms of the house, of course, this room's going to get hot because what's going to happen is it's going to suck all the heat from the other rooms to this area. However, the far extremes of the house will drop in temperature like a rock. So bad that at three degrees, I could freeze up water lines in 10 or 15 minutes. So that's really why I, I probably shouldn't do it at three degrees. I should wait until about 10 or 15 because then I actually might not freeze up water lines. Let's go ahead and light this lamp. Now this one has a round wick and lots of room for air to come in there. Let's wait until that wick gets all the way lit around. Okay. So there it's burning all the way around. Now, when you turn this up, it lights that globe on fire. And then now it'll produce a bunch of light. So this one in itself would probably produce the light of 10 of those others. Now it does have a globe for it. Um, this was in a rail yard. It's got a, it's got the, the flexible, and I don't know if it was on a railroad car or if it was just in the yard, but that's about as much as I can get out of this one. There. So that's also a wall mount but it's on a bracket, so I'm sure that I could probably, if I wanted to hang this, I probably could. The only thing with this one is that the temperature that's coming out of the top of this is so extremely hot, I would definitely worry about it getting too close to this wood because it, you can't hold your hand right right there is, is so hot that even there, that's that's actually burning me, so. Shut that one off. A friend and I actually found this at an antique shop hanging in the basement for relative, I mean, for, for really inexpensive. So at that point, I didn't even know what it was. I knew it was an oil lamp, but I didn't, I'd never seen anything like it before. these globes you can still find them but they're getting really expensive so that's why I bought those but I have decided just to find a set of these globes and trying to make sure that they're on there properly is really important because the last thing you want is for them to fall off And you don't want to over tighten it and crack it either. I can't wait to get the set for this one so I'm not swapping them. Matter of fact, I won't swap it again. This will be it. Okay. So now Gotta get them both lit before I put the globes on because it kind of kind of balances there.
There you go. There's the chandelier burning with both of them. Very neat. Lavender wants to go outside, huh, don't you? But I have to be real cautious that I don't let her out and forget about her because I'm paying attention to you guys. So she's got to wait a couple minutes. Okay, so now you're gonna be you're gonna be really surprised. <coughs> you ever have a song just reach in and touch your soul? I mean, my entire tattoo is this song. Um, and you might be surprised at where it come from. So as you know, I'm a chimney sweep. Always love Mary Poppins. Um because of the tie to the chimney sweep. This is, this is the song from the second Mary Poppins. I think it was called Mary Poppins Returns. And the song is Trip a Little Light Fantastic. And in the first movie, the songs were about chimney sweeps. Kind of cool, because I'm a chimney sweep. But this song is about an O'Leary. An O'Leary is a guy who goes around lighting lamps. In the old days, he was the guy that was in charge of um, just lighting up the village for people to see. Um, and that's what the second Mary Poppins movie was all about. It was about the O'Leary and, and he was the main focus rather than Chimney Sweep. So anyway, the lyrics to this song, it was fun when I when I heard it sang in the movie, but if you dissect the lyrics to this song, oh, I'm more on O'Leary than I am a chimney sweep because this is who I am as a person, my personally myself. Um, I'll try not to butcher the name, but I want to give credit to the writers of the song. So, Mark. Shaman and Scott Whitman are the writers to this song. So, here we go. Let's say you're lost in a park shore. You can give in to the dark or you can trip a little light fantastic with me. When you're alone in your room, your choice is just embrace the gloom or you can trip a little light fantastic with me. For if you hide under the cover, you may never see the day. But if a spark can start inside your heart, then you can always find the way. So when life is getting dreary, just pretend that you're an O'Leary as you trip a little light fantastic with me. And then it goes on to say what an O'Leary is, but I already told you what an O'Leary is. Now, when you're stuck in the mist, sure, you can struggle and resist, or you can trip a little light fantastic with me. Now, say you're lost in a crowd while well, you can stomp and scream out loud or you can trip a little light fantastic with me. And when the fog comes rolling in, just keep your feet upon the path. Mustn't mope or frown or worse, lie down. So when life is getting scary, be your own illuminary who can shine the light for all the world to see as you trip a little light fantastic with me. And O'Leary loves the edge of night, and though it's dim, the world looks bright. He's got the gift of second sight to trip a little light fantastic. And O'Leary's job is to light the way, to tame the night and make it day. We mimic the moon, yes, that's our aim, for we are the keepers of the flame.
And if you're deep inside a tunnel when there's no end in sight, well, just carry on until the dawn. It's darkest just before the light. As you trip a little light fantastic with me. Now, if your life is getting foggy, there's no reason to complain. There's so much in store. And I think it goes on to say on 17, Cherry Lane. And I took that out because I just took it off my paper because it wasn't as important to my story. Um, <clears throat> there was a day for me that I was stuck in the dark. After my divorce, um, I didn't go through a lot of it with you guys yet. And I've been writing stories forever. And it's in all my stories. Um, I was stuck. I didn't want life to keep going on the way it was. And somehow, I found a way to not only to get past it and still live the next day, but to prosper, to grow to, to be an O'Leary. I found a way to figure out that if I found my way out, maybe I could help others find theirs. And that really is who I am in life. And that is that guy that's always trying to build someone up and never tear them down. Um, to help people try to figure out, now you can't do it for them, but to help people try to figure out what their next step is so that they could then produce their own light to go live out the rest of their life in a positive fashion. Um, I just, I hate to see people stuck. I hate to see people, I hate to see people down. Um, and so anyway, that's my story. I'm serious about it. That's my tattoo. Of course, there's a chimney sweep on it. Um, I don't know if you can even see it. I have a chimney sweep. I have Mary Poppins. And then I have the rest of that song basically tattooed around my arm and all those lit lamps. And there's even an O'Leary on the backside somewhere. Um, because ultimately, the only way we can, you know, sometimes people get stuck so deep that if we don't gently nudge them out of that place and help them to light the spark in their self, then we'll lose them. And, and it's not fun um, to lose them. So anyway, hope everybody has a Merry Christmas. And until next year, because I think this will be it for me until after the new year. Stay warm. It is, I'm in the, I'm in Ohio, which is in the northeastern part of the United States and it is cold. We got a cold front come through that the temperature went from 38 degrees to negative three degrees in about six hours. The winds come through at about 75 miles per hour. I don't know if any of you have seen my tiny cabin that I built for Johnny Appleseed. I lost the roof for it. I should have strapped it down. That is a movable structure and in standard wind conditions up to 30 or 40 miles an hour that thing won't go anywhere well that wind come through here at 55 60 75 mile per hour gust and, and i lost that roof it's upside down um smashed all over the ground out there so as soon as the weather gets even a little bit i'm not going to go out in three below zero but as soon as it gets above you know 20 degrees i'll go out there and get that thing put back together and um, so that it doesn't do any permanent damage to it. But anyway, everybody have a Merry Christmas, and I will catch you after the first of the year.